Students, faculty, drivers, even joggers have stopped along Barstow Avenue on the Fresno State campus this summer to ask about a collection of greenhouses lining the road on the university farm. The chambers are part of a unique plant science experiment being conducted by Fresno State graduate student Bardia Dagan Manchadi, who is completing his master's thesis with a study of how fresh market tomato plants respond to extra doses of carbon dioxide gas. Plants require CO2 gas for their metabolism in the same way humans require oxygen. So, the hypothesis is, would plants grow and produce better if they get extra doses of the gas they love? Fresno State plant science professor and researcher Florence Gasal Sharma, who works with Fresno State's Center for Irrigation Technology, is overseeing Bardia's work and also included different irrigation treatments in the experiment to learn how plants respond to various combinations of these critical elements. Once the growing cycle is completed, Bardia explains the next step. Okay, so now I'm I'm, sh I'm cutting the tomatoes and then shaking them to our bean, the big bean. And then after that, uh, we are going to take them out to sort them in different colors. Red breakers and green tomatoes. And then we are going to calculate the total yield. The red, breaker, and green colors Bardia mentioned represent three maturity levels of the harvested fruit. These levels represent sugar content and soluble solids and are used by the industry for categorizing fruit for shipping purposes. For example, fruit destined for faraway markets is picked green so it can ripen en route. Research team members also took plant samples regularly during the growing season and measured for leaf area, nutrient content, and weight. Photosynthesis measurements were taken for each CO2 and irrigation treatment. In addition, plant and root biomass weights were recorded. Once the growing cycle is completed, Barty explains the next step. Here we have a bunch of uh, paper bags here. Uh, we pulled three plants out from each chamber uh, to measure the plant dry rate. Uh, so we're going to put these plants in oven later today and then uh, after a couple of days we can weigh them and calculate the biomass of the plant so then we can see how elevated CO2 affect on plant biomass, above ground biomass. According to Kasal Sharma, the farm industry has a lot to gain if an economically efficient method for delivering CO2 to crops such as tomatoes can be developed. Yeah. Ready you want you wanna <laughs> you wanna take a shot? <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs>